what's going on everybody? Hope you're having a good day as always. My name is Michael and thanks for joining me. So today's video goes out to a special subscriber named Jacqueline who had commented saying, hey, I'm a homeschool teacher and I'd like to educate my kids on installment loans. Can you make a video about them? So yes, I absolutely can. And in fact, I'm going to give you a little a round of applause real quick, Jacqueline, for actually teaching your kids about finance. I know you do this at home and honestly, that's where you should educate kids about personal finance because they don't really learn about this in traditional school settings. So yes, I'm very, very happy to make this video. Now real quick guys, if you've got any other just really basic elementary personal finance questions, whether it's for you or anyone else that needs this information, definitely never hesitate to let me know. I'll always make the videos if it's within my scope of understanding, but if it's not, I'll definitely defer elsewhere. But as far as today's topic of installment loans, I'm going to go over a few things. Obviously installment loans, but also terms like fixed rate, variable rate, secured, unsecured, fixed terms, revolving terms, right? All of these are going to be things that kind of go into play when discussing this stuff. So let's just jump right in. Now to just jump right in, let's just go ahead and define what an installment loan is. And an installment loan is really any loan with a set term length or payoff date. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys. Take care and have a good one. Just kidding. But really, it is that simple. An installment loan is just really any loan that has an established payoff date or term length, right? So the installments, right? That word installment loans means how many installments do you have? How many payments do you have? So if I'm financing for four years and I pay once a month, then I have 48 installments, right? 48 individual payments. Let's talk about this um, comparing two different types of loans, right? If an installment loan is something that has a defined term length or payoff date, well, the opposite would be something like a revolving loan, something that happens month to month and there is no real payoff date, right? So an example of an installment loan could be a whole bunch of things like personal loans are installment loans, car loans are installment loans, mortgages are installment loans, heck, payday loans are installment loans, right? All of these things have a specific time period, right? A personal loan, it may be for 12 months, right? In those 12 months, you're gonna pay off this loan, right? After it's done, after you've paid off the loan, it's gone, it's done. Same thing with a car, maybe that's financed for three years to five years. A house could be 15 years to 30 years, but regardless of the time period, there is a time period. So that's what makes it an installment loan. It has a set payoff date and a certain number of payments. Well, a revolving loan, right, and these could be things like lines of credits or credit cards, there is no set payoff date, right? There's your due date, but there is no payoff date, right? My credit card is due, I think, on the third of every single month, and I pay it way earlier than that, but every single month, even though it's due on that day, it'll never close out until I choose to close it out, right? That's what makes it revolving. Month after month, I can use it without closing it, right? So installment, set time period, revolving loans doesn't have a set time period. Okay, so that really is just the basics of understanding what an installment loan is. But let's go over some other factors, right? I said earlier that a payday loan could be an installment loan, right? A personal loan is an installment, a car loan is an installment, a boat loan is an installment, right? There's also your secured versus your unsecured, right? So an example of a secured loan would be anything with collateral. And for those of you that don't understand the banker definition of collateral, it's just really any object of value that's backing the loan, right? So in a car loan, your car is the collateral. In a mortgage, your house is the collateral. On a boat loan, your boat is collateral. And so all of these are example of secured installment loans, right? Unsecured would mean things that don't have anything backing up the loan. So an example of an unsecured installment loan would be a payday loan, a personal loan, a holiday loan, right? There is nothing of value backing or securing this loan. Therefore, it is unsecured. Now, another thing to understand about these secured versus unsecured installment loans is that when you have a secured installment loan, because you have collateral backing up the loan that could be kind of taken over if you don't pay in your loan, that's what gives them lower interest rates, right? So cars, boats, houses, even though they're all gonna charge different rates, traditionally, they're gonna be lower rates because of your collateral, right? If you refuse to pay on your car loan, then they're gonna take your car away. If you don't pay in your house, they're gonna foreclose on your house. Right? So traditionally, there's lower interest rates. Well, if you have like a personal loan or a payday loan, right? if you don't pay those, well, there's nothing really they can do other than charge you late fees and report you to the credit bureaus. 
um, but there's nothing they're going to take away from you. Now, because they don't have that extra layer of security or coverage with the collateral, they're going to charge you higher interest rates. Now, another thing that I want to mention regarding interest is what type of interest um, installment loans charge versus revolving loans. Now, typically, installment loans are going to charge fixed rate interest. This means that whenever you get a loan through the bank, and you're signing all the paperwork, it'll say that a loan is a fixed rate interest loan. Meaning that whatever the agreement is, whether your loan's at 5% or 10% or 1%, whatever it is, that loan rate is probably not going to change ever. Over the entire life of that loan, your interest rate will probably not go up or down, right? Unless you refinance it, but that's a whole nother topic. Right, so fixed rate loans, I think, are preferable because there are no surprises, right? You know exactly what you're getting into. Now, on the other hand, when we're talking about revolving loans, again, things like lines of credits or credit cards, more than likely, they're going to be variable rates, which just means that the rate can go up and down. Now, most of the time, the rates are going up, and so it's not really anything you would want to have, but just know that variable rates typically are associated with revolving loans, and fixed rates are typically associated with installment loans. Now, the last aspect of this that I want to talk about is really when someone should take out an installment loan and when someone should just avoid it entirely. And I think this is going to be different from individual to individual, but let me just give you a broad overview, right? If we know that installment loans comprise of houses and cars and boats and personal loans and holiday loans and all sorts of things, well, is one loan type better than the other or is one reasonable and one's not reasonable? Yeah, in my opinion, there is, right? On one end, we have things like cars and houses, right? And I literally pretty much limit it to these two. These two types of installment loans are understandable. They're typically high dollar amount items that more than likely we're not going to have enough cash to pay for it in full. I'm not saying that these are good loans, but what I'm saying is that they are understandable, right? I'm not going to criticize anyone for putting down 20% on a house or a car and needing to finance the rest. Okay, obviously I want you to spend less money on that loan, but the idea that you need a loan um, for these two specific items is understandable, right? I'm not saying it's good, but it's understandable, right? So that's what you have pretty much in the understandable aspect, cars and houses. In the middle, where you have just the don't do it loans, are things like personal loans, okay? Personal loans often are a substitution for credit cards. Um, they oftentimes will have better interest rates in credit cards, but it doesn't mean that they're good rates. And really, most of the time, people get these for things that don't really matter a whole lot. So I would say don't get personal loans. They're not really that beneficial for you. And if you absolutely have to get a personal loan, do your research and make sure you're getting the lowest interest rate you possibly can. Right? So that's the middle. The, I don't advise it, but whatever. If you have to, you have to. On the other end of the spectrum is things that you just should never do, ever. Under any circumstance, at any point in life, should you take out things like a payday loan, which is an installment loan with just obscene, ridiculous interest rates. Right? The people that give out these loans are, in my opinion, 100% predatory lenders and you should just not do any business with them whatsoever. And other loans like this include like holiday loans. And I mentioned this specifically because it's November now and Christmas is coming up. And guys, I've worked at a financial institution for over eight years. The amount of times I've seen people apply for like holiday loans or credit cards or personal loans during this time of year specifically so they can finance Christmas is unbelievable. Never do these type of loans. You don't need it. It doesn't help your life out in any way. Just avoid it like the plague. Right? So all of these are installment loans, but some I will say are better than others. You've got your cars and your houses, you've got your personal loans that I'm not a fan of, but you know, whatever, they're not absolutely horrible. And then you do have your absolutely horrible things like payday loans. So, and with that, I think that pretty much covers everything that I would mention. If there's anything that you still have questions about, put it in the comment section below. I'll gladly answer it if I can. Also, if you found this video educational or informative, please give a thumbs up button. It really does help the channel. Um, also, don't forget to share and comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you would like to support the channel directly, there's two ways you can do it. One, there's a Patreon link down below. Um, obviously, no obligation, but if you want to give support to the channel, I greatly appreciate it. 
appreciate it. Likewise, if you happen to be buying anything from Amazon, I've got a link down below where whatever you buy, it gives a little commission to the channel without charging you any extra. So cheap and free way of supporting the channel. But that's what I want to talk about today. Again, I want to give a pat on the back to Jacqueline for teaching our kids about personal finance. I absolutely love hearing about this stuff. But thank you so much for watching. Take care, guys. I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, I know I just said this stuff, but let me say it again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all the support that you guys give me. And to support you, here's two more videos that I've made in the past in case you haven't seen them. Don't forget to share these with your friends and family so we can help all the people achieve their financial goals. Likewise, if there's anything that you would want to see made that you haven't seen thus far, definitely don't hesitate to let me know. But thanks again, take care, and have a good day.